Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Juan and welcome back to another book review. So today we're going to talk about the classic novel Wuthering Heights by the English writer Emily Bronte, which I know it's a lot of people's favorite Victorian novel. And if you appreciate my reviews and would like to show your support, please give this review a like and subscribe to my channel. That way this video will get to more people who might also enjoy it. Thanks. Wuthering Heights is now very highly regarded and a lot of people love it, but when it was first published in the 19th century, it was kind of a flop and didn't get very good reviews. As most of you probably know, Emily was one of the three Bronte sisters, the other two being Charlotte and Anne. The three of them were writers and their books continue to be published to this very day. A few weeks ago, I reviewed Jane Eyre by Emily's sister Charlotte, which happens to be one of my all-time favorite novels. I have always preferred Jane Eyre to Wuthering Heights, finding the latter rather excessive, but I won't compare the two novels in this review, and instead I will focus on Wuthering Heights and try to assess it on its own merits. Wuthering Heights is a frame narrative that contains the story of Heathcliff. Heathcliff is an orphan adopted by a rich landowner who then falls in love with his adopted sister Catherine and who must endure many humiliations in his youth until he runs away. He later returns to take revenge on everyone who humiliated him and on their descendants. To me, all of this sounds a lot like the plot of a Mexican telenovela, and that's the first thing I thought about when I first read Wuthering Heights in college. But the similarities with a telenovela or a soap opera do not end there. For example, Heathcliff is a powerful and cruel character. His cruelty is so over the top that I think he would make a, a great telenovela villain. Heathcliff and Catherine are both very passionate people, and there is something irresistible about the romance between these two adopted siblings. But can their love story have a happy ending? Wuthering Heights has a relatively complex structure that I think I will talk about later, but the way the story is framed is very clever and the narrative order being non-linear, I think is what makes this novel stand out. So we have two narrators in the novel, Lockwood and Nellie Dean, which further complicates the novel. So the story is told through flashbacks in non-chronological order. So in this case, I think knowing the plot in advance might help you unless you have an aversion to spoilers. But I think I've said elsewhere that at least when it comes to classics, I often prefer to be familiar with the plot before reading the novel so I can focus my attention away from the plot and more on the style, the language, the characterization, etc. But you know, I know that's not how everyone reads, of course. In a way, Wuthering Heights is a story about everlasting love, the kind of love that goes on even after death. The story of Catherine and Heathcliff is just one of the two love stories in the novel. The other love story is the one between uh, Catherine's daughter, Catherine II, or young Catherine if you like, and Hareton. Only one of those two love stories will have a happy ending though. One of the most interesting aspects of this novel is how some of its characters are able to grow and change while others remain in the past and never evolve. Apart from the love stories, Wuthering Heights also tells the story of revenge and specifically about how revenge never works out, which is a very Christian idea, but this is after all a 19th century English novel. And like most English novels of that time, Wuthering Heights also deals with social class. So it's interesting to see how in the course of the novel, several characters change their social class status. So social class was not as fixed back then as I think we tend to believe it was. Well, I think this is all I can say about Wuthering Heights without spoiling it for people who have not read it yet. So now, I am going to uh, summarize the plot and talk about the novel in more detail and there will be some spoilers. So you have been warned, if you don't want to hear any spoilers about Wuthering Heights, you should stop watching right about now, probably, and I will see you again very soon, I hope, for another video. Okay, for those of you who are still here, I am now going to summarize the plot and share more thoughts I had on Wuthering Heights. Well, before I summarize the plot, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the novel because the narrative is, as I said, not linear, which can make reading this novel a little bit confusing. So the narrative events are told in a non-chronological order and there is a lot of plot. So it is a bit hard to summarize it, but I'll try my best. So the novel begins in the year 1801. 
There is a man named Lockwood who rents a manor house called Thrashcross Grange in an isolated place in the English countryside. Lockwood rents the house from another man named Heathcliff, who himself uh, lives in a nearby manor called Wuthering Heights. Lockwood is intrigued by Heathcliff, so he asks his housekeeper Nellie Dean about him. Nellie tells him everything she knows and he writes everything down in his diary. So most of the novel is actually what Lockwood writes about Heathcliff and the other characters in his diary. So Nellie tells Lockwood about her childhood and how she worked at Wuthering Heights from an early age. Back then, the manor was owned by a Mr. Earnshaw who lived there with his wife and children. Mr. Earnshaw adopted an orphan boy named Heathcliff. His own children, Hindley and Catherine, initially hated Heathcliff, but soon Catherine changes her mind about him and they both become inseparable. Mrs. Earnshaw dies, so Mr. Earnshaw, now a widower, gets even closer to his adopted son Heathcliff and even sends Hindley off to college so Heathcliff can be free from his cruelty. Only three years later, Mr. Earnshaw dies and that means that Wuthering Heights now belongs to Hindley. So Hindley returns to the manor with his new wife, Frances. Hindley forces Heathcliff to work on the fields and treats him just like any of his laborers. However, Heathcliff and Catherine are still very close. So one night, Catherine gets bitten by a dog in Thrushcross Grange. So she stays there as a guest of the Linton family, who are the owners of that manor, for several weeks until she recovers. During that time, Mrs. Linton tries to make Catherine a proper lady, and Catherine gets close to one of the Linton children, Edgar. After the birth of his son, Hareton, Hindley begins to drink heavily and becomes extremely cruel and abusive toward Heathcliff. But things are about to get even worse for Heathcliff because even though Catherine is in love with him, she decides she would be better off with Edgar Linton to whom she becomes engaged. All of this proves too much for Heathcliff, so he runs away and doesn't come back for three years. When Heathcliff returns to Wuthering Heights, he finds out that Catherine has just married Edgar. Heathcliff comes back for one reason and one reason only, and that is to take revenge on everyone who treated him cruelly and abused him. Mysteriously, Heathcliff is now very rich, he's wealthy, and he uses his money for his revenge. So Hindley continues to be a drunk, and he's now also in a lot of debt. So Heathcliff takes advantage of this, and one day he agrees to lend Hindley some money just to make him feel worse. Later, however, Hindley dies and Heathcliff inherits Wuthering Heights. He has his sights on Thrushcross Grange too, so he marries Isabella Linton, Edgar's sister. Heathcliff behaves very cruelly toward his wife, Isabella. Then, Catherine dies after giving birth to his daughter. Isabella has had enough of her husband's uh, cruel treatment, so she runs away to London, and there she gives birth to Heathcliff's son, who she names Linton after her own family. Mother and son stay in London for years. Catherine's daughter, who is named also Catherine after her late mother, grows up in the Grange and doesn't even know that Wuthering Heights exist. However, one day she goes on a walk, discovers Wuthering Heights and meets Hareton, who you remember is Hindley's son. Isabella dies in London and her son Linton goes to live with his father Heathcliff. And as you can imagine, Heathcliff treats his son very cruelly too. Another three years go by and one day Catherine meets Heathcliff and goes to see Linton at Wuthering Heights. Catherine and Linton have a romance, but because they cannot see each other, they communicate by letter. Nellie, who, if you remember, is the servant who is telling Lockwood this whole story, destroys Catherine's letters. Catherine then begins seeing Linton in the evenings. Linton is very sick, so he asks Catherine to look after him. But we find out that Linton is not really interested in Catherine and that Heathcliff is forcing him to pretend he is. This is all part of Heathcliff's ongoing revenge. He wants Linton to marry Catherine so he can get his hands on the Grange. The widower Edgar Linton, Isabella's brother, uh, who was married to Catherine, gets extremely sick. So Heathcliff sequesters Nellie and Catherine in Wuthering Heights and forces Catherine to marry his son Linton. Meanwhile, Edgar dies and soon after so does Linton. This means that Heathcliff is now the owner of both manors, Wuthering Heights and Thrushcross Grange. He stays in Wuthering Heights and rents out 
the Grange. Heathcliff forces young Catherine to work as a servant in Wuthering Heights uh, to humiliate her, and that concludes Melly's memories of what has happened so far. So the narrative then moves to the present time. Lockwood is rightly appalled by this whole story, so he decides to move out and go back to London. But six months later, he returns to the Grange to visit Nelly, and she tells him what has happened in his absence. So Heathcliff has died, but before that, he had become obsessed with the late Catherine to the point that he thought he saw her everywhere and spoke to her ghost. Young Catherine and Hareton have been living together in Wuthering Heights. They are now the owners of both Wuthering Heights and Thrushcross Grange and are planning to be married. The novel ends with Lockwood going to visit the graves of Old Catherine and Heathcliff. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Wuthering Heights, but I can see its merits and more importantly, I think I can see why so many people love it. The plot and some of the characters are compelling. Heathcliff must be one of the most memorable fictional characters I have ever encountered. It is easy to be fascinated by Heathcliff, first by his romance with Catherine and then by his cruelty and his plans for revenge. I know I made fun of the plot earlier in this review, but I hope you've kept watching so you can hear me say that I do think Wuthering Heights is a sophisticated novel, and its place in the literary canon is more than justified as far as I'm concerned. Wuthering Heights is one of the best English novels of all time, well worth reading, and if you enjoy it, I think you'll probably also enjoy reading Gothic novels, especially from the late 18th century, which I suspect the Bronte sisters must have devoured in their youths. But now I would love to hear what you have to say about Wuthering Heights, so please let me know your thoughts if you have read the novel. Do you love it? Do you hate it? And if you haven't read it yet, let me know what you think of my review. Do you want to read it now? Have I made you curious about it? I want to know. By the way, I link to the books I review in the description box for each video so you can buy a copy at no extra cost and support my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends on social media. You can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram or both at Bookish Islander so we can talk about books on other platforms too. This is all from me. I hope to see you again very soon for another book review or bookish video. Bye for now.